This video was sponsored by Envado Elements. You know the drill guys, today I am photoshopping your drawings again. If you want to send yours for the next episode, make sure to send it to bennyseditshow at gmail.com and then let's just get straight into the first drawing sent by Ninja Dragon Gaming. Hi Benny, I love your videos and I hope to be in the next episode. I made this monster, his name is Fanto. Thanks for submitting your drawing, I'm pretty sure this one is gonna be epic, so let's drop it into Photoshop and get this train going. I decided to start with the legs because I had an amazing image for that as you can obviously tell. I used a bit of warp to adjust the shape so it looks as accurate as possible. I split it up in two separate legs and that looked interesting, very interesting. Then for the lower legs I did the same thing all over again. Then for the upper body I decided to use this image. As you can see this is gonna be one fit ass monster right there. And again I used warp to make it match the drawing and looking at it like this I almost lost hope already. I erased the arms and shoulders since they were gonna be covered by its head anyway and sorta... I don't even know man. I made everything black and white to achieve a bit of harmony in this shit show because I was planning on recoloring the whole thing at the end anyways. Then for his chest, I again took that same photo and now masked out the chest only. I uh, removed the uh, nipples because, well, I don't see uh, nipples on the original drawing either, so I stitched it all together a bit more and that whole thing I basically had to do to the arms and everything as well. Once that was all one piece, I added a simple shadow all around him to get the base front lighting to look uh, a bit correct. Ish. Later I was gonna relit this thing to make it look less like a game character, cause let's face it, that's basically what this is growing into. Then for the head I used this back image, I, I know it's uh, genius, and sort of warped that to look like his head. I know how pathetic this looks, but just have a little faith, alright? See? That's a lot, uh, a lot better. <clears throat> anyway, now I gave the whole thing a nice purple color, cause uh, I don't know why, I just got purple vibes looking at the drawing. Then I made two beautiful shapes to make the eyes on his head and those I filled in with a red color. To those I added some shadow to give a depth and that same thing I did to the areas around them. At this point it slowly started to look less idiotic, until you zoomed out cause that's when things really escalated again. But the same thing for the nose, two beautiful shapes with some shadows around them. To give the guy that sinister white smile, guess what, I made another shape which I filled in with black and some more shadows around it. Then all I had to do was create a shape for every bloody tooth he has which obviously was a lot of fun and then shade them with shadows again. This took a shit ton of work and I did not enjoy that at all. Once the whole top layer of teeth was complete I added some more effects to make it intense and uh, yeah just cool. Also some more shadows and that whole process I had to do for the entire lower row of teeth as well. You know what they call that? torture. Now the little guy needs to hear stuff too, so I found this ear. I warped it again, turned it purple, erased the unnecessary stuff and did that twice. That's the horrible thing about making these, I have to do everything a million times over. It looks pretty cool though, not gonna lie. Now you can clearly see though how much this looks like a game character, I can tell you though, that's just the lighting that does that. You'll see when I add lighting later. About adding stuff, did you know that you can add a beautiful blue color to the like button on this video? You should try clicking it, it turns beautifully blue, it's, it's crazy. Then the till, I just kinda made a shape and and then filled that with a texture, like I usually do for these things. Some shadows and yeet for the fishy thingy on his head I found a, well, dorsal fin of a fish. That thing I also warped. Is there anything I'm not warping in this show? Bloody hell. Anyway, you guessed it, some more color and shadows. It's a miracle. Dude, even for these alien little eye antennas it's the same idea, so there's no point of explaining. I turned the background black because that matches the lighting a bit better and that looks pretty cool to be honest. For his feet I got this, which doesn't look all too great, but sometimes guys, I am lazy, alright? Accept that. I warped it, made it purple and copied it to the other side. I know how rusty this looks, but trust me, it'll be fine in the final edit. That's why it's called a final edit, because it will be, uh, fine. I really gotta stop making these weird ass jokes. Anyway, he didn't have claws yet, so I added those. I know they aren't the exact correct shape, but I kinda dig the look of these, so I just let them be. Looks a bit more deadly to me. I colored and shaded it to match the whole thing, and then I copied the whole sort of finger a few times to finish the whole claw. And... Thing. Then I moved it to the other side as well and voila. We're almost there except we still need those eyes on his antennas, so there you go, isn't that nice? After putting some shadows on them it looked uh, pretty okay and with that the base was pretty much finished. Now it just needed some more textures and a whole bloody background but that's uh, that's later. I started with a scaly texture which I sort of blended on the skin. I inverted the mask and painted some stuff back with a very soft brush. Then I thought it's not nearly dramatic enough so I found another way cooler scale texture which I also 
decided to add. This took a bit longer, but the result was also a lot better, so it was definitely worth it for once. I kind of spread that texture all over the place here and there to give it some detail, and then for some final touches I found this random moist texture which I also added to some areas. I'm not even really sure what it is or what I'm trying to achieve by using it, but it looked pretty cool so it is fine. Meanwhile I was looking at animals on the World Wide Web and then I realized a lot of animals have a different skin tone or skin color at the bottom or inside of their bodies, like their belly. So I thought I should probably do that too. I painted some stuff a brighter tan-ish color and that looked so much better than before. Especially on the ears, that really, uh, that really did it. It gave some more life and made it just seem less like a plastic toy. After a shitload of adjusting and fixing some little things, it was finally time to put this guy in an environment. But I'm gonna show this very quickly though, as I have more drawings for this video than just this one. I started off with this sort of abandoned warehouse, which I darkened a whole lot. I added some shadows below his feet and body in general, and also turned the color of the background with a purplish color. Works a bit better since the monster itself is also purple. To make the highlights on top there a bit brighter, I added some glow, or rather light bloom, to make them pop. The reason they had to be bright was so I had an actual reason to make highlights. I started painting some highlights here and there, and this is where it finally started to look less like a game character. I added some dust in the background, a shadow on the ground there, I made the eyes glow a bit more to make it look scarier and more intimidating, I mean, I did a lot of things. Even a warmer highlight coming from the right, because I felt like that would give even more depth, which it sure did. Then finally, I added a camera raw filter and tweaked all the sliders and effects until it looked epic enough. And there you go. That's the transformation from this drawing into the real life adaptation. I believe this took the longest to make. Thanks to Ninja Dragon Gaming for sending this drawing. I'll send this back to you after the holidays. As you've seen, this video is sponsored by Envalo Elements. And the funny thing is, the next drawing is made using assets from Envalo Elements only to show you how big of a help it really is. If you're a digital creator like me, you might want to consider it. On Envalo Elements, there's literally millions of digital assets for photo and video editing and much more. A bunch of you probably already know how big of a fan I really am, but seriously, it's fantastic. More than half of all the stock images I use are from Envalo Elements, and then I'm not even including all the overlays and textures they have. It is also so super affordable, especially when you take an annual subscription. You can find the link for that in the description below. But anyway, as I said, this next drawing is made using Envato Element stocks only to show you the true power of the surface. The drawing itself is made by Raleigh James. Hey Benny, here's my drawing of a snowman, except the head is a snow globe. I really hope that you can realistify this drawing. You can add anything you want. Thanks Raleigh, this is pretty sweet. So let's go and see how this works out. For this one, I was able to find a lot of pretty much ready-to-go 3D assets from Envalo Elements' 3D library, so I'm pretty sure this will be a piece of cake. For the main body, I'm using this image, which already is a snowman, obviously, which, uh, guess what, I warped to match the shape. I beheaded him with uh, my brush and erased the stuff that I didn't need. These black rocks I didn't need either, so those I destroyed as well. I'm sure you didn't see this coming, but I'm actually using warp to change the shape, can you believe it? I know, it's a miracle. Once I was happy with how it looked, I raised some areas again, and well, there's the uh, scarf. Then I found this snow globe, which I'm gonna put right on his head, right bloody there. However, I didn't need that whole bottom area, so I got rid of that. I did kinda need that edge though, so I brought back the full subject and selected just that area I wanted. That looked pretty fabulous. At this point, I can already tell this one is probably gonna look a bit more realistic than the previous one. Not cooler maybe, but more realistic for sure. To finish the scarf, I took another angle of it, since you can choose the angle yourself on Envalo Elements, it's, uh, it's great. That I warped also and, well, looked pretty nice. The inside of the snow globe from the drawing had this green grass in it though, so guess what? There's also grass 3D objects. I put it in there and, well, yeah, that. Then a little tree, and since I thought this is a snow globe, so it's technically fake, maybe a low poly tree would be fun. Then for the carrot, I found this image, and I'm getting so bored of myself, bloody hell. I warped it. A bloody gen. These rocks, I just kinda yeeted in there. And the same thing I can say about your rocks for the mouth right there. Ain't no rocket science. Then it needed some shadows here and there, so I grabbed my brush and started brushing. Painting. I mean painting. I was pretty sure the light was coming from the left side in this one, so I kept that in mind while doing the shadows and highlights. Now obviously his scarf has different colors than mine, so I tried to sort of correct those. My scarf had this pattern though, but it ended up not being a problem at all. If anything, it looked actually pretty cool. I erased this disgusting little edge and also warped the glass to look like it's actually inside the glass. Grass inside glass. Holy sh**. Then the Christmas hat. Santa hat, whatever. I also dropped it in there and this I actually had to cut up a whole lot since the shape wasn't the 
the same as the original. So I uh, warped Master Way, warped Master Way and so forth. Looked pretty accurate in the end though. Then the arms. I made those with a stick 3D object and that, you know, you know what, I'm not even gonna say it, no. A lot of masking too by the way. For the sign I just used this wooden texture which was included in a texture pack from Avalo Elements and then I rotated to match the angle of the drawing and masked out the part I wanted. The reason this looks so realistic is because, well, it, it is real. It's a real plank. Isn't it magic? I added some dark stuff here and there to make it look more 3D and that looked a lot better. Then I had to make it look like it was kinda sitting in the snow right there so I masked away even more stuff. To really put it in there, of course shadows are the answer, so those I added too. Took a while before it looked decent but, uh, well at least it looks decent now. This is starting to look pretty sweet actually. The sign however had to say Merry Christmas so I added the text Merry and Christmas, what a surprise, and turned these into red and white. To those I added some effects like a blur and blend if to really smash it onto the wooden plank and overall I could still use some shadowing though so I started adding some shadows all over the place. On the carrot right there, on the rocks right here, some other stuff. Of course it needed water in it too because well it's a snow globe, ain't no snow without water so I added this underwater shot and messed away the edges. Then I thought since this is probably gonna be in a winter landscape I should probably add like a frost texture because obviously the water would be frozen. I did that and it looked pretty lit. Or maybe cool is the better word since it's ice you know. Oh shut up. The only thing still missing were the Christmas ornaments and the lights. So for the Christmas ornaments I got these and just hung them up on the branches. I changed up the colors to make it a bit more accurate and added some subtle shadows as well for that final touch. Then I realized I totally forgot to add the shadows to the hat so I did that really quick. Finally the Christmas lights, this string I used for basically the whole thing. A lot of warping, masking and well the usual. I also added some nice glow on all of them to make it look like they're actually turned on and finally the shadows below them as if they're actually touching the hat. That same thing I did to the body lights and there you go, that's the character. For the background, here's what I did in a few simple steps. First I added the background I wanted to use, this one. The next step was adding a blur to the background to give the whole thing some more depth. Next the coloring on the snowman itself, so now it matches the background a bit better. Then the shading or lighting, shadows and highlights basically to make it match the lighting of the original image. After that I added a very strong haze to separate it from the background more. And then there's just what I like to call post effects, the final touches like glow, reflections and final little shadows. Finally of course the camera raw filter which makes the whole thing two times better than it was before. So there you go, that's the snow globe man. I'm pretty sure this is one of the more realistic looking ones. Thanks to Raleigh for sending over this drawing, I'll send it back to you as soon as I can. The last drawing for today, as usual the speed edit segment which was sent in by Prapthi, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hi, great fan of yours. I was wondering how creative you could possibly get with this drawing. This is my purple bunny inspired from two of my favorite plushies. Of course, no restriction, absolute freedom. Very nice, I'll see what I can make of this.
go. I actually ended up using pretty much only Envato elements for this one as well, so that's uh, very interesting. This maybe isn't my favorite one, but I think it does look kind of cute. I'll send this back to you as soon as I get the chance. Don't forget to check out Envato elements in the description, and then I guess that's it for today. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and if you enjoy my overall content, feel very free to subscribe, and most importantly, hit the bell to stay notified about future videos. Then I hope I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.